it's a very typical it's a very simplified uh, diagram of e-commerce flow of course there are a lot of more elements in that but just to give you a sense of the e-commerce flow right this is a typical interaction in any uh, in, these are the, the, the typical flow of interactions in any e-commerce transaction right so now keeping the previous flow in mind we have observed that very every end to end commerce transaction as i had mentioned before can be categorized into these four stages right stage one is discovery this involves searching for a provider then once the catalog is retrieved one can browse the catalog one then stage two is order where you are actually play, you know adding items to your cart and ordering and then your stage three is the uh, ordering and then the finally confirming the order stage three is the fulfillment of that order where you can track the order etc and post fulfillment okay now once you implement all of these apis okay all of the apis associated with all of these four stages what what basically you are left with is a transaction layer okay now the transaction layer itself consists of the three layers as you know that as you had, as you had seen from the earlier diagram there is a buyer side there is a seller side right now to actually put them on a single network there has to be some routing network in big in, in the bit in the middle right so what you see on the left over here the ones which are labeled bap represent the buyer side of the network okay bap stands for backend application platforms okay then on the right side you see all the sellers uh, in a sense all the businesses which offer services or goods to the end, end customer okay they are called the bpp these are the platforms which onboard businesses bpp is short for backend provider platforms okay so every network has a bap on the left or as in a bap on one side and a bpp on the other side okay the bap creates the demand it uh, it onboards the customer it creates the actual commerce experience to the end user the bpp on the other end actually publishes its catalog and uh, publishes its payment terms it's uh, it's basically business terms and is available to be discovered by bap now to discover a bpp or to discover a bpp on a network you require a central infrastructure which is called the bg otherwise called as a backend gateway okay these backend this backend gateway acts as a discovery infrastructure which allow which sort of takes search packets from the bap and broadcasts it to a bunch of bpps depending upon what context it is okay now how does it select the bpps to broadcast to how does it discover the bpps on infrastructure we will move in uh, we'll just we'll sort of you know go into subsequent slides where we discover uh, where we talk about the registry infrastructure but otherwise just to understand to, to get a give a basic understanding there is a search or there's there's an api which is generated by the bp bap which goes to the bg the bg broadcasts that api to the bpp the bpp respond with uh their their uh the, the relevant response right and it gets forwarded back to the bap right otherwise in in uh, in, in in other scenarios the bap can also directly talk to the bpp in the network right given that both of them have understand the same language of backend so it does not matter what uh, whether the bap and the bpp are uh, you know know each other or do not know each other we just have they just know the fact that the other side can understand what i am what i am sending on the network right so there is a three layered transaction layer which on which one side is a uh, one side is a buyer end other side is a seller end in the middle is the routing end okay now all of these transactions are not just uh, 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 not just uh, sort of interoperable but also sort of authenticated using digital signatures which means that every single api which is called right uh, by the bap bg or bpp right or called back by the bpp or bap are all digitally signed right using a uh, using a standard P, uh, public key infrastructure right and that digital signatures ensure that no transactions right uh, all the transactions sort of non reputable right which means that one bap if if you, if a bap signs a request and sends it to the bpp which means the bpp can trust that hey this is actually this actually came from the bap and this is like a valid uh, valid transaction which is authenticated and authorized by the bap saying that hey i am authorizing this transaction i am signing this transaction to actually using my my uh, my private key so that you can validate it at any point in time right this also allow creation of things like uh, you know ledgers smart ledgers which allow you know which 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 allow you know easy auditability and you know settlement at a later point in time okay. so there's the uh, these are the three layers of the transaction network okay now this is just a uh, uh, 
this is just a slightly zoomed in view of the each of these party parties as i said there are backend application providers there are backend gateways and there are backend provider platforms uh, the baps uh, basically generate the experience the bpps generate the catalogs the gateways are basically routing entities right now uh, just to give you a little bit of a flavor of uh, backend gateway backend gateway just not just doesn't provide routing it also can offer a host of other infrastructure services to the network like for example payment gateway services it can have uh, uh, you know it can have uh, open data apis it can have uh, you know ledger as a service so there are a lot of lots of other services which can uh, which which a backend gateway can also allow a network uh, to you know sort of uh, add uh, uh, to provide value added services to the participants of the network okay so this is just a same uh, the same uh, zoomed in view of uh, all the transacting entities which we have talked about and moving forward this is just a, a slightly more simplified model of the network this is this just for you know more for logic to understand the logical architecture i've just removed most of the icons over there and otherwise it's pretty much the same uh, one interesting thing which it has uh, which was not mentioned in the earlier diagram was the uh, presence of a registry right so the registry acts like a it's a basically a lookup table right which any any participant on the network any bap bpp and bg can look up to discover participants on the network uh, discover the various you know uh, platforms or participants of a network okay? this is also used to uh, look up the uh, the keys of the public keys of any participant to validate their signatures as i said that every part every api is digitally signed in the network which means that the the person who is signing it must sign uh, signs it using a particular private key the person on the other the platform on the other side must also have a way to validate that signature right those those public keys to validate the signature is actually present on the registry right and uh, same way the registry also has performs a dual function okay one not just to hold the public keys and the endpoints of the various uh, participants it also acts as a lookup table which the bg uses okay to discover the various uh, bpps on the network now why would bg actually use this registry right i told you that uh, the backend specification is a commerce is a domain agnostic specification right but when you are actually transacting okay you cannot transact without any uh, any sort of awareness about what domain you want or else you know you will end up uh, you know receiving an entire uh, the entire database and the, the the addresses of every platform which is on the network Right. which means that it is possible in the specification to add a little bit of domain awareness okay in user messaging pack for example uh, a typical uh, message would in in backend would mean okay i am looking for mobility service providers to take me from here to there which means that it is possible to add that tiny domain called mobility into the search packet which the bg can view okay and look up the registry to only get mobility uh, service providers right moreover it can also mention that in in your search packet that i want mobility service providers in the country of india in the city of bangalore okay uh, to go from this point to this point which means that uh, the bg can actually look up the registry and apply these filters into its query to get all the mobility service providers within the city of bangalore okay so the registry not just acts as a key store but also acts as a uh, acts as a lookup table for all the bpps grouped by domain grouped by country grouped by city right so this is the uh, this is the typical uh, uh, block diagram of a uh, of a backend network and as we all know bap creates the uh, experience generates the demand bpp create you know uh, acquires these pro acquires providers and businesses and uh, you know generates the supply bg basically routes the packets and discovers uh, discovers bpps uh, so moving on uh, this is the this is just a, a quick sequence diagram of how what's the communication protocol uh, inside a typical backend network as i had mentioned earlier the apis are all async apis which means that the response is not contained in the same session this is an example of a search api between any two parties you uh, you fire a search api and it immediately get sends an acknowledgement and then the actual catalog is responded in the on search api which you have to which which the sender has to immediately respond with an acknowledgement and if you don't receive an acknowledgement the you know there is a there's a finite number of times you might 
uh, you should be able to retry uh, that that same API until you get a response. Okay. Now these responses, the requests and responses are also linked to each other. So since these are both async, there has to be some sort of common ID between the request and the response to understand whether you know it is the same response. Is, is the response to the same request which I sent earlier? Right? That that is handled by uh, various message IDs and transaction IDs, which help identify uh, entire transactions to individual you know round trip transactions. Okay, so that that you will find uh, uh, a little uh, that 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 you will you can actually you know go through when you go through the specification as well. So yes, so this is this is a typical uh, overview of. Backend protocol, its API specifications, its its communication, its taxonomies, and its schema. Uh, 